Welcome back to another explained exam. <clears throat> Welcome back to the classroom. My name is Mr. Wong. Today we're going to explain the exam. This time the 2019 Penn Physics paper, question 26. And we are going to be looking at, there's actually two modules we can look at. We're looking at module one, inquiry question two, and also module two, inquiry question one. The idea for this is to break um, vector components into perpendicular parts. So we have a vector here, or we have a diagonal vector, and we can break it apart into its perpendicular components. So let's actually look at what the question is asking us to do. It says we have a ball suspended in the air by two identical ropes of equal length, as shown in the diagram below. The tension in the ropes is 57.2 so 57.2 here 57.2 here okay it says calculate the mass of the ball so we want to know what the mass of this ball is we want to know um, as we know this we want to know the force of this particular part pulling it down we want to know the mass and we want to know the acceleration the acceleration is rather simple to note. It's negative 9.8 meters per second squared. Why negative? Just because I'm denoting that as the down direction here. So to calculate the mass, I need to firstly work out what's the force driving it down this way, okay? So if I draw out this triangle, so pretend it's a perpendicular triangle, I can assume if this is also a perpendicular component, this is an angle of 40, okay? Or I can do it this way around, doesn't really matter. So at 40 degrees, okay, and I have this side here, we can use the trig ratio of sine theta. So sine theta is using the opposite side divided by the hypotenuse. The hypotenuse here is 57.2, so 57.2, we want to find the opposite component, we can call that x, and we know that sine theta is 40 in this case here. So if I just rewrite my equation down here, it is the opposite, or we'll call it the x component, is sine 40 times 70 or 57.2 that gives us let's plug it into the calculator a force range of 36.76 and the remaining values as we go here but this only represents one rope okay so it only represents the Y component of this rope, or I'll draw it again, of this rope pulling it down this way. We actually haven't accounted for this component here. So we need to add that in. Now, lucky for us, the rope is exerting the same amount of force and it's at the same angle. So we can safely assume that the other Y component pulling it down will also be equal to this value here. So what we can say is the total force, our total force down in this case, is just times by two, which gives us 73.534. Two fifty five five. That's the total force we're using. So if we then use that to find the overall mass, okay, which is this formula that we have here. Now mass is a scalar quantity, so we don't need to account for the negative component of acceleration, so we can just leave it as it is. So mass is equal to force, which is 73 point that, divided by 9.8. And I'm just gonna round it off this time. Or Perhaps let's just write the exact values first and then we'll round it off. So 561485 kg 
if we look at the question here, the lowest significant figures we used in this question is 75.2, although I did plug in 9.8. So on your formula sheet, 9.8 is the acceleration of gravity. So that's the lowest significant figure I used in this equation, so or this calculation. So I'm going to round it off to two sig figs as well. So it'll be 7.5 kg. And that's how you do the question. Hopefully that gives you a better understanding of how to solve for vectors. Anyhow, if you enjoyed, please watch other videos and I'll see you next time.